My favorite product card game is that window right after a new set where everyone is still figuring out what cards work well together and brewing up new decks. Unfortunately, this doesn't last very long until things feel mostly discovered and you're left just waiting for the next big shakeup. So to try to capture this experience in a less transient way, I made The Simulacrum, a card game with procedurally generated cards and a few different game modes. We're going to hop into a look at Delve, a roguelite deck builder in the same vein as Slay the Spire or Dungeon Runs to take a look at the basics. A Delve begins by selecting a leader card. These are not procedurally generated. Starting out, you'll have access to the first five, one for each color. But as you play, you'll find ways to unlock more leaders. We're going to start by picking the red leader, Regis Pyromancer Lord. His ability helps get ahead on mana and rush out big threats earlier than our opponents can deal with them. Similar to other games in the genre, you can scout out the current floor to figure out what path you want to take. The nodes with leaders in the background are the combat nodes, and you can see the opposing leader here. The elf consists of three floors, at the end of which you can choose to continue in endless mode or start a new run. The first node in the delve is always a shop. But you have the opportunity to edit your deck before the first combat nodes. First, let's take a look at our starting deck. We start with a unique deck every time. No synergy really stands out, so I'm just going to pick up the fast dragon and the four drop to give this some extra removal. It's usually simple to start building from a blank slate, so I'm just going to clear the deck and start building from scratch. Since all the cards are procedurally generated, I'm reading my collection here for the first time myself. Every card that you have lets you put three copies into your deck, so building towards synergies becomes much easier than it would be if you only had one copy of each card. You'll see most cards here have three numbers, a cost in the upper left corner and two numbers on the side. The upper left number is the mana cost of the card, while the numbers to the left and right are the card's powers and health respectively, which is how much damage that it can take and how much damage that it deals when it's attacked. First node's an event node, we're just going to eat the fish and luckily gain 5 max HP for the rest of the run, upping our starting life total from 25 to 30. And then we are going to head into this first combat node. And the system in the simulacrum is simple, any card from your hand can be dragged to your mana once per turn to transmute it as mana. We're going to transmute this angry bloodsucker and then pass the turn. When you do, all of that card's colors are unlocked and you become able to play cards of the transmuted card's colors. With our second mana established here, we can deploy our leader, Regis, who gives us two temporary mana that we can hold for later. With this five mana, we get to play this Violent Tiger. Our opponent plays a spell to transform it, and this definitely isn't one that we want to click on, as it'll just destroy itself. We'll keep building up our board and pass back. Combat happens automatically at the end of your turn. Units will attack from left to right. Any units controlled by your opponent and attack directly if nothing is left. Our opponent plays a mad zombie, and thankfully all of our units are red or black, so we don't have to worry about its own death trigger. Just going to keep up the pressure with another tiger. Clicking on the tiger lets us remove one of his units without taking any damage. His leader retreats back to the leader's zone when it dies, costing an additional 3 mana to play again. We're just going to click the end turn button a couple times and clean up this first encounter. Standard battles like this give a card reward, while elite and boss fights can give relics or special rewards like a new ability for your leader. As you continue to delve, you'll find events and relics to improve your deck. After clearing three floors, you'll win the run and can either start a new one or continue on in endless mode. At the end of each floor, the cards you've found are added to your main collection and can be used in other game modes, like bosses, which are super difficult fights which use all of the cards you've escaped with to try to defeat. Defeating bosses unlocks more leaders that you can then delve with. There's also a multiplayer draft mode, where you draft 15 cards and play against other players who did the same. Win 5 games before you lose 3 to have all the cards that you drafted added to your main collection. The Simulacrum is currently in early access, but early reception has been pretty good, with positive reviews on Steam and a community on Discord. If this looks interesting to you, there's a link to the Steam page down below, and uh, thanks for watching!